Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426 and today we have the review of the Robot Damashi Gundam GP04 Gerbera. Now once again, I have also been waiting for this figure or any product of this in this scale or size. Well, not exactly scale, but yeah, in, in a more smaller size to come out for a long time. Uh, so yeah, this GP04, for those who don't know, this is also in the GP04 series. Um, so the GP04 was, in terms of, like, it was never completed to my to my knowledge. I mean, the whole unit did exist to to some degree, but once again, for the GP01, after getting it, it you know, damaged badly, it was modified to GP1 FB or full burn. Now, from that point, the, the problem was that GP1 FB and GP04, they kind of now serve the same purpose. They were basically high maneuver type you know units so the gp04 was no longer needed in terms of development so they didn't exactly scrap it uh it was already partially completed so once again the anaheim electronics you know modified it to become the gerbera tetra the zeon unit that we kind of know so yeah it's an interesting story and uh, once again in the anime for those who don't know this may yeah, this may not have been, you know, obvious, but like in the other, like this, there were reference of that aspect in the entire theory, thing, like in the SD Gundam Battle Four. Uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, yeah, SD Gundam Battle Force anime or animation. It actually kind of showed that pretty well. There was a character called Doctor Gerbera or something like that, um, Gerbera Tetra or whatever, and then he, it was apparently he can cast off his armor and inside reveal that he was the Gundam GP04 so kind of interesting series but yeah all right so uh, anyway so this being a robot doll machine and being regular release and GP00 Blossom is so also being regular release is a really interesting move but once again let's see what we got so right off the bat I would suggest if you if you are getting this do mind where you're going to uh, display this because of those gigantic fuel uh, fuel cancer slash you know um, uh, those gigantic parts on the back, they're going to take a lot of space. So make sure where you want to, you know, put it in there. So, uh, of course, out of the box, uh, these things are separate pieces. So you do need to insert them separately. But yeah, uh, just be aware of that aspect. All right. So now let's go over components. I'm, since we have reviewed a good amount of uh, robot damage figures in this channel, I will be going fast over the typical stuff. So number one, here we have some basic stuff. So number one, we do get the typical three... Oh, the three beam saver effects slash beam firing effect parts. Uh, you do get the you, you do get the long one and two s shorter ones. We've seen these before, and once again, we do get the bent one as well. And then we do get two thruster effect parts. Very nice. These could be either attached to the backpack, or um, not exactly back backpack, but any thruster parts uh, that it, you should be able to connect these as well. And then we have the additional firing effect part. So some of these uh, beam effect parts, they could be a little bit boring or bland just to attach this to the rifle. So you, they, they do give you this to give it a more, you know, burst fire effect part like that. So yeah, and this, it's actually pretty uh, effective and also works on the beam saver as well. So that's that. And once again, thank, thank the gods, they actually give you a spare antenna and a spare V-fin. Now for those who are new to the hobby, the V-fin or any antenna is like the most fragile part, not only in Gunpla, but also in figures. So it's a really good thing they actually give you a spare one as well. And here are the other equipments that you are supposed to be getting. So let's go over some uh, of the easy ones. So number one, hands. Now currently out of the box, it should be ha using the multi-purpose hands, uh, which is meant for the beam saver or any other uh, typical weapon. Uh, what else hands you get? You get four more sets, so you get the fully open hand. You get another um, set of multi-purpose hands, but the grip is more in an angle. This is this could be also depending on the figure. It's, it can be used in various ways. We get the semi-open hand, and here we have the last the trigger fingers. But once again, depending on the figure, some of uh, some figures use this as a beam saber hand as well. So yeah, so that's that. And then we do get the shield. This is the exact same shield as the ones we've seen previously, like on the GPO one. But we once again with a very nice uh, decal or water slide already applied to it, the GP. And once again on the inside, we have the handle does not move. Here we have a ball joint connector for the two other connectors. You can also fold the shield like that, like in the anime we saw. Although this this unit didn't, didn't really show, but yeah. And, and we do get two uh, ammo packs or 
E packs, where I believe that's what they call. It. But once again, you can actually attach these two onto the shield. But once again, if you do so, uh, the the grip there is less space there, so it might get a little bit tricky. So even the manual doesn't really say show an example where you can hold the shield with the ammo packs as well. So uh, yeah, a little bit tricky, and I have done that before. Not the easiest connection, but once again, uh, well done. And once again, the shield connectors, there are two types. Number one is this small one with the peg and the ball, ball joint. This is meant for if you want to connect the shield to the back of the arm, this is what you use. And if you want to hold the shield onto the side, this is the one that you use. You can see there, you can see the, this joint is actually so going the sideways. So, yeah. And finally, we have its long range rifle. I think that's what it's called even on the wiki. So, yeah, this is like the main weapon here. Now, some people were complaining where this, is this the only weapon this guy gets when set I mean, that is what it is. Just because it's a Gundam doesn't mean it you can't always make like use like the strike Gundam or like the Freedom Gundam to be like the standard for every Gundam. Some Gundams are or some mobile suits just have less weapons and this is one of the case. Uh, so we have an extremely long range rifle and this is actually a pretty powerful rifle even in Gundam Battle Operation 2 And once again the ammo packs you can actually detach that if you want to do so There's a lot of stuff going on here the handles there's three handles for some reason Although I don't think this is a, this is a handle that you're meant to be actually holding with the grip because this front handle is actually very very fragile So do be careful with that uh, it does move around but make sure where you're moving it because on the other side, it's blocked with this cable, so don't try to force it. You want to move it to the other way around. The front handle, no problem, but it doesn't actually go 90 degrees to the side. It only goes side to side a little bit, maybe 60, 70 degrees, something like that. And then we have the middle main handle. So once again, I've never seen a gun that has three handles, so this is kind of new to me. But once again, other than that, the details are pretty well done. We have this pointy anchor thing on the side and then once again for those who are familiar with the gp01 rifle you, re you should remember that there is a beam saber effect part of that you know, a beam saber that can actually pop out here to you know deal with quick close combat this one also has that but even much longer they have the mold but once again they don't actually have the beam saber effect part there's no uh, attachment point here sadly so once again uh, i think that was that was a missed opportunity but once again um who knows maybe there's a different reason but anyway yeah that is the way how it is all right so now let's look at the figure itself my videos are always taken eaten up by showing all the components so uh yeah so there's a lot of stuff going on here so let's start with the front and i am going to detach those things on the back uh, pretty soon all right let's start with the head now once again i absolutely do love the ver anime style uh, figures as well because their whole you know design uh, or head stuff sculpted they're not like squarish they're not all like in angles they, they do have that uh, like semi roundish style which is what I like and all, once again they did a really good job on the head sculpt uh, very impressed so once again the head can go up pretty well because it, it is a robot that wants figure uh, and then going down wise a uh, pretty standard angle if you ask me and do be careful with the antenna and v-fin they you, you, uh, because every time you're moving the head you're going to be touching one of those as well now going 360 let's say i would say it is possible but i'm being extremely careful so there is space for the head to go 360 although i don't think you'll you will be moving the head 360 on purpose um, now since the back there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's see what we got. So once again uh, These parts these fuel canisters or binders. They're going to be as separate pieces So you can actually detach them the middle one. I don't think I don't see anything too special here So that's that I'm gonna detach that for now now for the left and right now these two are Identical, but they they are there is a left and right so the way how you're supposed to peg them in um, The shape will definitely determine that and once you have these connected to the back um, you can see there's these binders here on the back, so which actually holds the beam saver hilts. You can actually lock these into place. So that's a pretty small, interesting aspect that that doesn't isn't really mentioned in the manual. And you can just pull this out. Now keep in mind, do unlock this first, unlock this first, and then pull it out because that's the way how you're supposed to do it. Uh, yeah, and now we have plenty of space. All right, so. Let's start with these shoulders. Now the shoulders, these gigantic shoulders. Once again, you have they have these thrusters in the shoulders. I'm not sure what these small three things are below the thruster. Oh come on, uh, here. So kind of an interesting aspect. 
Um, but once again, shoulders, we do have a little bit of side to side movement going on here. But once again, uh, not only the shoulder is moving, but the inner chest is also moving as well. And as you can see, I'm just going to be a little bit safe. Uh, you can see there's another joint there, which means we can actually move the arm upwards like that. So very well done. And then other than that, 360 on the arm itself. And then bend wise, we do get a very nice decent bend. And once again, uh, this also has that gimmick where you can move the arm side to side like that. There is actually another joint like that. So I'm not forcing it. There's actually uh, another joint that allows you to move this side to side. Now, the reason why this thing exists is because of the Alex Gundam syndrome. For those who don't know, every like art style you see of mobile suits or Gundam, um, they're always, their arms are always like this. They're always shown like this. But once again, most of the time when we're displaying Gunpla kits, we have to have the joints upward so we can actually do something. So to, you know, to prevent that, they do sometimes do this to give that extra articulation or to make it look, look, look less awkward. So yeah, and the shoulders itself can move up and down as well. Now, when I first got the figure, it was like downwards pretty well bad, so I'm not sure why, but yeah, just keep in mind to make them look go upwards and make them look less awkward. All right, and then looking at the backpack once more, other than those gigantic binders, these things also can move, go up and down and they can actually move left and right. Now for the, for the fuel canisters or the binders, there is no joint here, so once again, do not uh, try to plug it in and then go side to side because there is no joint or movement there. Unless mine is just extremely stiff to the point nothing is moving. And then we have these thrusters, four of them, they are all, they can all move on their own. So once again, if you have extra, you know, uh, thruster effect parts, you can all slap everything onto that as well. All right, and then for the main body, uh, actually, yeah. And then the hand-wise, it's the typical robot that wants hand where the ball joint is on the arm and the hands have the hole. All right, now the body, you can go 360. Now, once again, once you have the everything on, it may be a little bit trickier, but should be still possible. And then we do get a very, very nice ab crunch, all to the point where it's now seeing, uh, it looks a little bit ridiculous, but once again, a very nice bend towards it, for towards the front. Actually, it's like more like an extension. You can actually pull it a little bit out like that, which makes it look very ridiculous. Backwards, not so much. Now the front skirts, once again, your standard front skirts, side skirts, uh, they do look pretty similar to the ones we see in other units, but once again, uh, they don't go upwards because of the design, but they, they can move up forward and backward a little bit. And then back skirt does not move at all. So once again, side swivel is present, and then you do have the hinge system where you can lo relocate the overall leg position. And then going forward, possible, 90 degrees possible. Bend-wise, it, it is, now this is as far as I can bend, but this is not because it's lacking articulation, it's just the design that's colliding with the joint, so that's that. But once again, you can see, once you bend it, you can see the knee armor and this part joints are now separate are moving on their own, so pretty good design choice there. Going to the side, not so much, because mostly because of the side skirt armor as well. And then feet-wise, you do get a really decent amount of bend here, although I'm seeing some already stress marks there a little bit. Oh, I hope that's not stress marks, but once again, because it's on a ball joint, for going forward and backward is possible. You, should, you get a decent pivot joint, and toe bend is present, and then you can go downwards as well. All right. Now we've seen the basics of the unit. So once again, there's a lot of stuff. That we do get the overall ver anime style articulation here. All the qualities are there. Um, I should, I almost forgot to mention for the beam saver hilts, you can actually pull them out, and yeah, you do need to, um, you do need to pull these out separately. You attach them separately. Now, once again, these are very tight joints. Now I'm actually kind of worried how to take them out, but these are also very very short and then also there is only connecting by a small peg so once you're pulling them out do be careful because if you accidentally break it that's pretty much game over for you all right so we've seen the basis of the unit i'll be right back with the rifle the long range rifle demonstration and we'll call it and if there's anything else interesting uh to point out if not we'll end it off there so i'll be right back Okay, I'm back. So here I have all the back thrusters or uh, the fuel canister slash binders all reattached to the backpack. I gave, I attached the uh, beam effect part and the thruster effect parts onto the shoulder. 
and once again it holds up pretty well and uh, once again I forgot to mention once you actually have everything on the back it may feel like a little bit back heavy but once again this third one on the back is, is actually going to work as a stand so I'll actually show you guys that later it will actually work out on its own stand so it won't actually tip backwards as well like you saw in the beginning uh, it was on my action base with action base with no problem as, as well or rotating stand to be more specific now once again I actually for the hand wise I'm using the trigger finger for the right hand and I'm actually uh, let me just take off the beam effect part because it's actually hitting my camera at the moment so the way how I did is that first I got the right trigger finger hand attached it to the to the main handle there and then once again um, you could technically work your way through to hold the front handle, but it's going to be tricky. So what I did is that even in the box, this, this is what they did. So on the third handle, the back one, they make it go all the way upwards and then they use a semi open hand to make it look and then use just the right angle to make sure to make it look like to give it the illusion where it's holding that back handle as well. So you don't. So keep in mind, don't actually try to squeeze on the handle with the other hands because you might actually break something on there as well. So. Even on the box art, you, if you look at it closely, it's not actually holding that third handle. So keep in mind. Uh, so once again, uh, as I mentioned before, do be wary of where you're going to display this or how you're going to display this with the binders on. Because even on my setup, it's colliding with that back like crazy. Uh, but once again, holding the rifle, no problem at all. So you should have zero concerns about this as well. All right, so I think there's only one thing left to mention is, is the beam savers, which uh, I'll be right back with that as well. Okay, I'm back. So here, this is not exactly a demonstration. Just a, a few quick reminders. Is that number one, uh, it can hold on. It can stand on its own. It's currently not touching the back. Just want to give it out. So once you have it in the right angle, it should hold on on its own. But once again, if you want a just a neutral stance pose, it, the figure can go on uh, properly as well. But at the same time, it will tilt slightly backwards like that. So it's trying to fall down on its own. So once you have it at, at the right angle, it should be fine. Or what you could do is basically. Um, uh, basically, if it goes backwards, you can actually uh, move the body uh, slightly upwards, and there you go. Uh, the third uh, wing binders is actually holding as a base stand, so should be no uh, there should be no problems with you know uh, balance then as much as you think. So it it may be a, a bit of a concern, but once again, it's also able to you you are able to work your way around it, so no need to worry about that. Uh, shield connection, no issue there. Uh, once you have the connector connected with the ball peg, um, ball joint, and the handle, you should have zero problems. Beam saber ha hand holding, no problem. The only problem I would say is uh, be careful when you're pulling these out because they go in extremely tight. Actually, try I I actually struggle for like five minutes just to get these pegs out properly. So once again, if you think it's going in too tight, either sand these down a little bit, or you can apply maybe oil inside the beam saber. A hole and then that should help you out you know to take them in and out pretty more easily anyway that is pretty much it for the review so this was the review of the robot damashi gpo4 for anime so once again if you're if you're if you're collecting the gpo the gp0 series i highly recommend this this is actually a pretty fun figure to like move around with so uh yeah and it's it's you know regular release so i don't think if you're a collector i don't think there's no reason to say no to this figure as well and yes i will try to get the gp00 as well because that is the that is the actual gp00 i know compared to the one that i reviewed yesterday so yeah Anyway, if you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. Uh, I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out, so please stay tuned. Until then, see you guys next time.